director of revitalization strategies. And back with me is my good friend, Latasha Brown. She is, of course, co-founder of Black Voters Matter Fund, uh, and she's going to be joining the conversation as well. They, uh, Dr. Ali, I'll start with you. We've heard a lot this week about um, how climate change is a big contributor to how intense these tropical storms are. Can you explain why, for those who aren't science-minded, uh, why that is? Yeah, it's very simple, that when we burn and utilize fossil fuels, it warms up both our oceans and our atmosphere. That then intensifies these various storms that we see, the hurricanes, uh, these extreme rain events that are going on, and also the flooding. This is not new science. In 1856, Eunice Newton Pope uh, showed that by the utilization of these types of things that we were going to face these types of situations. And of course, now the IPCC, the National Climate Assessment reports have all said that if we continue to have this addiction to fossil fuels and to burn them, then we're going to intensify the things that we see from the climate crisis. You know, Latasha, I wanted to have you um, on as a part of this conversation because when Katrina happened, nobody called you and said, hey, Latasha, come get us. You just sprang into action and you were going back and forth trying to help the community. So you've seen firsthand um, what the devastation looks like and you've been on the front lines of trying to help and save people, as you always do, <laughs> heart of the uh, salt of the earth kind of woman you are. Um, what does it look like for the people who are suffering? Because I always think when they say evacuate, get out, where, where are people going to go? Do they think about people who have no chance? transportation, who can't afford the gas to get there, all of that. That's exactly right. You know, there's the natural disaster that we can't do anything about, right? Yeah. Um, which is around the weather. Right, but then there's also a disaster, a man-made disaster, which we're, which we're talking about in climate change that's intensifying, that as the Gulf Coast becomes warmer, you're gonna see more intense storms. But then there's a third disaster, which is poverty. Mm. So we've got millions of people that are living in this country that are literally vulnerable, that they don't have the opportunity or the privilege to just say, some of them don't even have broadband service or cell phones or even ways of getting information. Many of them don't have uh, transportation. That's what we found in Hurricane Katrina, that many people stayed in place not because they wanted to stay there and take a chance, it's because their resources or the lack of resources prevented them from doing so. And so oftentimes they are, they're in the first line of being impacted and it's also hard for them to recover. Most, they're living in houses that normally in terms of storms, they're gonna be impacted in a way they're cheap made housing, they don't have transportation, they don't have necessary disposable resources so that they can leave. And I know people who stayed because they were afraid that if they even left, depending on their jobs, that they wouldn't be able to get back quick enough so they catch their jobs that they would lose. Wow. So we literally have to recognize that what is happening right now, as we're looking at climate change, as we're looking at these storms, that the vulnerable, that low wealth people and poor people in this country are extremely vulnerable. And that's why we need a safety net around policy. So when these things happen, that they are protected as well. I remember you saying that water is really, you oh, learned absolutely. during Katrina, it's a hard thing to transport. Talk to us about that. You know, it was really interesting. I did not recognize how hard it was to, to get water, yeah. right? And it's funny. Um, um, and my friend, Dr. Santiago, we worked together. We worked in the Gulf Coast region, particularly in Alabama, Mississippi, and Louisiana, just basic needs around water and cleaning supplies and people be able to get to one place or another. You know, but something as simple as a basic need, when you don't have resources, when you don't have a network that's moving, when you are isolated, it is hard to get that simple basic need. So we have to actually recognize this is a larger issue that while it is around the storm and the immediate need that there's a longer term issue that is around systemic poverty that is actually exacerbating the problem. Yeah and these the confluence of all these things That's crushing right. uh, a disproportionate amount of people who look like us um, and just our fellow human beings Absolutely. in this country. It doesn't really matter what you look like that you're being uh, adversely impacted by all of this. Um, Dr. Ali it can feel really hopeless sometimes since this fight is really uh, it does come down to humans versus the forces of nature. Uh, what can we do uh, like how do we ourselves try to fix things for the generations behind us when it comes um, to climate change and understanding that it's really hard to prioritize climate change when you're faced with like Latasha said with poverty when you can't pay your mortgage when you don't know how you're gonna feed your children when you have job insecurity and then somebody says oh but wait you need to focus on climate change what would you say to those folks what they can be doing well, the first thing that we can do is get educated. Second thing we can do is make sure that we are partnering with frontline organizations. The third thing that we can do is make sure that we understand the power that exists inside of our dollars and to make sure that we are not funding, you know, our own uh, demise, if you will. And then, of course, the fourth aspect, which is so critically important, is to make sure we understand the power that exists inside of our vote and how we have to make sure that we are bringing folks in, uh, both on the local, the county, the state, and the federal level, 
who care about our communities, who are mo willing to move forward on strong climate and environmental justice legislation. If we do those four things, then we'll start to have a much stronger foundation underneath of us to make change happen. I want to, um, so, you know, you have two wonderful witty people here. Now I want to toss to a soundbite from a half-witted person. Uh, Tucker Carlson is an anti-scientist. I don't know why. Um, but let's take a listen to this, and then we'll talk about the huge audience he influences on the other side. It's not a close call. There has been, as a factual matter, no increase in hurricane frequency in the continental United States from 1900 to 2020. So the number of landfalling hurricanes has dropped slightly over the past century. Why? We're not sure, but we can probably guess it has nothing to do with climate or your SUV. So hurricanes are 25% less common and at most 5% more intense. So it's not really about science, is it? Because actually there's no science behind these claims. No science behind these claims, uh, Dr. Ali. Look, during the, um, while we played that sound bite, Latasha made the good point. I hope you don't mind me saying like, that he, yeah, sounds, he sounds like Herschel Walker. <laughs> he sounds like Herschel Walker. This is the party. Uh, it's just, the, the but, challenge with this, though, Latasha, is he's talking to millions of people every night right. who believe that. So right, what, right. what would you say to, to people who, are, who just reject sense? We need to understand that these people are trying to kill us. Yeah. This is far beyond just about a party difference. This is a party that has aligned themselves with white supremacists. This is a party that has denied them, aligned themselves with deniers. You have on one hand, you've got a Herschel Walker in Georgia saying, we have enough trees when we know right. not, that tree, we're breathing right now because of trees, right. right? Then you have a governor, you have people throughout the South that literally what we're looking at is we've got this major, major issue around climate change and they're climate deniers, right? Only because their own power. So they're willing to kill us in sake of maintaining their own power and we've got to get rid of them. I mean, but also Dr. Ali, they're not just willing to kill us, they're willing to kill themselves. I mean, you saw people who died in the name of being COVID deniers because they were uh, inhaling all that uh, MAGA craziness. So what is your response to people who follow these folks and listen to them and can look at truth in the face and still elect to believe a lie? Well, you know, Tucker Carlson also said that the January 6th insurrection was just a footnote in history. So we know he doesn't have a lot of credibility. Who does have credibility are the thousands of scientists who have shared with us exactly what is happening in this moment and what is coming. Those are folks with the National Climate Assessment, the IPCC, and a number of other science organizations. We have to begin to educate ourselves on the impacts that are happening. When you look at places like Appalachia and in Kentucky, when they got hit with those you know, 500 year floods. Those are some of the folks who actually listen to Tucker Carlson. So folks need to understand that these folks have no um, interest in protecting your lives. And you need to be very careful where you're getting this misinformation from and allowing it to help to frame out the way you see the world. Yeah, absolutely. Don't drink the Kool-Aid. Thank you so much, Dr. Mustafa Santiago Ali and Latasha Brown. Coming up next, helping